Hello and welcome to GarageBand tutorial number one, getting started in GarageBand on an iMac and iPad. I'm Lyndall Murphy and firstly, I will be giving you some basic startup information when you open up GarageBand on an iMac. So what I've done is I've clicked on GarageBand down the bottom of the screen here and it automatically opens up a project that I've been working on. So we'll close that one down and what I'll do is go File then New. And as you can see there's a lot of options here. Click on Learn to Play and you can see you've got guitar lessons, piano lessons and artist lessons. So you can actually go and teach yourself how to play those instruments if you need. And you can see I've got previous projects there that I've worked on. So let's go New Project and I'm just going to click on Keyboard Collection and press Choose. And we'll just wait for it to load up. And as you can see, we've got quite a number of keyboard tracks here. So I don't need all these keyboard tracks at the moment. So if I click on the individual tracks, I can press delete on my keyboard and just get rid of all of those. And you'll notice that the tracks, they get a little bit bigger. So let's look around. On this left hand tab here, you've got your library, which you can click on and off. You have EQ controls which are down the bottom here. The library tab up the top has many different instruments that you can choose from. I can click on any of these and change my track if I need to. I've got more EQ controls here. The edit button, the scissor button I just pressed, can be moved up and down, down the bottom. And you'll notice a keypad and a playhead which I'm dragging, which you can move to where you need to record. I can click on and off these buttons when I need to. Over here I have a rewind button, so if I move the playhead, I can rewind it a bar at a time, or click this button to go straight to the start. I can fast forward and go back to the start and press play. If I want to record, I press the red button, and I can record through my MIDI keyboard, and notes should appear here. We will cover this more in tutorial 3. I can hover over buttons and it will tell me what those buttons do. If I go to Beats and Projects up on this button here, I can change it to Time to show me how long the song is going for. So it can change it from seeing bars or the actual time. If I select this button here, it's the BPM button. If I click on it and drag it down or up, I can change how fast the song goes. This button here can change the key of the song, but I'll leave it in C major for the moment, and the time signature. So I can change that to whatever I please, but for the moment we will leave this at 4-4 four, four time or simple quadruple time. This button here is a loop tab, looks like two arrows. We can actually loop um, some of our project if we need. This here is a count in and here is a metronome to keep you in time when you're actually recording. With this volume control here, we can choose how loud or soft we want our whole song to sound. A notepad to write notes if we need. You can also click on this button here for my different loops. And I can select one of those and drag it to where I need it to go. I can also edit it by dragging it um, to different bars if I need to. And you can see this button here is a media library, so if I click on that one, I can select different audio that I would like to import, or I can import movies. So I'll click on the movie button, and see here you can actually import different movies if you need to. 
So I could actually create film music if I wanted to. Remembering that if I hover over buttons, they can tell me what they actually do. And I can move the whole project if needed. For any other help, I can click this button here, which is the question mark, and that can give me help on any item if needed. So when you're using GarageBand, it's important to have a go at everything within this program, whether it be hovering over different buttons to see what they actually do, and giving everything a go. So as you can see, as what I'm doing right now is just hovering, closing, experimenting and seeing what everything does within the program. A good thing to do as well is look within these menu items up above here. And you'll notice that beside each of these directions, there's usually a shortcut that you can actually learn to use. And that makes editing and even recording a lot quicker to do. The version of GarageBand that I'll be using is version 2.0.1. Now I've stored my GarageBand in my music folder, so I'll click on GarageBand and what will happen is it will open up a project that I've been currently using. And here we are. So I'm going to go back to my songs. And as you can see, it automatically saves the work I've done. And I've got quite a lot of other projects I've been working on here. So what I'm going to do is press the plus symbol and it will automatically create a new project. So we've got keyboard function here, we've got drums, a guitar amp, which can be used in conjunction with an iRig, audio recorder record voice for any sound, a sampler records a sound as well and you can play it through keyboard, smart drums, smart strings, a smart bass, smart keyboard and smart guitar which we'll start off with. So as you can see it's got all these tabs along the front here that are all different chords so you can press any of those chords and you can actually play it as if you're playing the chords on the guitar. But before we do that, I'll just show you the playhead here. Um, if I move it backwards and forwards, I can move it to where I want to record. This plus symbol here, I can actually add on extra bars. So I'm just going to add on at least, say, 20 bars. And Throughout the project, if I do something that I don't, didn't really want to do, I can press the undo button next to instruments at the top left. The next thing we can do is if I move the playhead, I can click back, I can press play, and I can also press record and record some guitar chords if I need. So there's slight delay there due to the connection from the iPad to the Mac. But as you can see, it's recorded a small section of music. My master volume control, I can move that up and down. My loops function allows me to actually use pre-recorded instruments in my actual project. So I can actually select all these different loops that were being recorded previously and select them into my project if I need. I can select a different genre if I would like. Um, if I'm looking for something that's, say, grooving, I can actually select that and find loops that are specific to my project. The mixing tab that's just highlighted there allows me to do many different things. So if I want to mute the track, I can select that. If I need to solo it, I can turn it on so it's only heard um, within the mix. Track volume, how loud. Track pan means to move it from left speaker to right speaker if I want. Echo level is quite interesting. You can add some echo onto there. Um, or you can actually adjust the reverb level. So we'll try the echo level. Let's just have a listen. So as you can hear, the echo effect has actually affected the guitar part. So it sounds like it's repeating itself over and over. So we can actually adjust the echo level the reverb level so we can add a bit of ambience to our track if we need. Quantization actually corrects the timing of the notes in your recording. So if you record something that's slightly out of time, you can actually put this setting on and it'll make it sound more in time. 
You can merge recordings together. So merging tracks together if you run out of tracks. Master effects, uh, you can add echo and reverb to the whole project if you need. So if you've got many tracks where you want to add the same effect to all of the different tracks, you can select these effects um, within this setting here. If I click on settings, I can turn the metronome on and off, but it is good to have so you keep in time. Count in, counts you in before you actually record, and you can actually change that sound of the count in to woodblock or hi-hat. I usually like woodblock, so I'll leave it on that for my um, project. And I'm going to change the tempo down to 100 beats per minute, so slightly slower. Back in settings, I can change the key if I need, but the time signature, I'm going to leave that in 4-4 time. But when you actually change it to a different key signature, you'll notice that the, the bars on the screen slightly change. I can actually fade out my recording at the end of the project, and I can actually run GarageBand in the background, so if I want to listen to it while I've got other apps open, I can do that. AirPlay, I'm actually using that at the moment connecting my iPad to my MacBook so I can record this screen recording. And if I click on GarageBand Help down the bottom, I've got all of these options to actually help me with understanding how to use GarageBand. I can also click on the yellow question mark up the top right hand corner to give me instant help. So as you can see, I've swiped to close the track controls. I've done that and I can add a new track so let's add a keyboard part a smart keyboard cut part will be good and it tells me how I can actually record this smart instrument so I can change the sound so I can select a different keyboard sound I can play the chords I put it on autoplay so it plays a particular rhythm for me so there's many different things that you can actually do within this app. It's very exciting. If I go back to the tracks, I can select these tracks so I can make piano solo by clicking on those headphones or I can mute the guitar part if I need to. So as you can see I've muted the guitar and the piano part. I can adjust volume level there as well. So overall you can see there's quite a lot of similarities with the GarageBand on the iPad with the GarageBand that was shown on the iMac version. The next tutorial that will be shown will feature how we can actually use loops within the GarageBand version on the iMac compared to using loops on the iPad. Stay tuned for tutorial 2. Thank you.